New documentary that will air this week on this channel, actor and broadcaster Stephen Fry tells the remarkable tale of the largely forgotten artist who pulled off one of the most daring acts of sabotage of the Second World War. Earlier, I sat down with him to hear this remarkable story. May 1940, Germany invades the Netherlands. United by their hatred of the Nazis, a struggling artist and an accomplished cellist take on the might of the German army. Using their artistic skills, they save thousands of Jews from the death camps. Stephen Fry tells the incredible and little-known true story of how a group of misfits, including a gay artist and a lesbian musician, pulled off one of the most daring acts of sabotage in the history of the Dutch resistance. Willem Arundeus and Frida Belinfante both lived openly gay lives when the Nazis invaded the Netherlands. Together with friends and colleagues, this band of artists used their creative skills to forge identity papers for Jews, saving countless lives from deportation to the death camps. Is you hold it? Oh, there's the light bulb. Oh, just like a banknote. Yes. When the Nazis began to check the forged paperwork against the real files, Willem and Frieda came up with a daring plan to blow up the central records office, but without harming anyone. It's a tale of sacrifice, courage and resistance, and for Stephen Fry, who is both Jewish and gay, this is a deeply personal story. Stephen Fry, wonderful to see you in the studio here. As one Fry to another, it's wonderful to see you too. So this is an extraordinary film. It is an, you know, a multi-layered, amazing story. But no one that I spoke to in this country, including myself, had ever heard of these two people, Willem and Frida. Willem Arundeus and Frida Belinfante. Both artists in their own way, one a musician, Frida Belinfante. Unfortunately, someone betrayed them and, and Willem was, was captured. One of the last things he said was, I wanted to show the world that homosexuals are not cowards. And by God, he showed that. He really did. It, uh, you know, I asked the question at the beginning of the film, and it's one we, we all ask when we think about something like a Nazi occupation, is what would I do? You know, very powerful at the end, you said, you know, Willem's life and Frieda's life was there to prove that you can be gay and be a hero at the mm. same time. Many people would say, well, actually, that, you know, that's no longer the case now. That, you know, that point has been made. But there are some parts of the world where that is not the case. Absolutely. And there are too many countries where the death penalty is the reward for being a you know, practicing gay person. So how should we approach those countries? It's a really good point. And I, I've come to be more firm about probably not ever going to the Emirates anymore. I, I've been in the past years and years ago doing comedy shows and mm. that sort of thing. And now I, won't go. I feel I won't. No, I feel uh, I know that there's nothing more loathsome to an individual state than hearing a, a Western liberal uh, decrying their views on marriage, sexuality, and gender and all those things. How dare they lecture us and they'll then talk about slavery. And but these, the are, views, these are views vested in humanity. I mean, they are, and I would feel that. And, you know... When I was younger, I found Peter Tatchell a bit of an embarrassment when he would break into church sermons and uh, go around the place. Why, why was that? I, because I thought, oh, you'll turn some people off. You know, some people will think, oh, he's too extreme. These militants, mm. they'll use the word militant. But now I realise he was right and I was wrong and that I was a coward. So what about the Church of England? The Synod recently decided that they would bless same-sex marriage, but not celebrate. I'm an atheist, uh, but I happen to love the Church of England in a weird kind of mm. way. Did you I, agree with I, this decision? And I, I understood it, but I thought it was pathetic. <laughs> the Church sort of has to believe in absolute morality, but it can't and it never has. Mm. It thinks it does. It is opposed to relativists like me, who say this is sometimes right and sometimes wrong, and there's no absolute good, no absolute evil. And they say, nonsense, there's an absolute... But all that, they once believed in slavery, they no longer mm. do. They once believed people like me should be burned in a fire. Mm. They no longer do, even if they don't want to marry us. They still, you know, they change their morality every decade. Yeah. Finally, I just want to talk about this picture that we've been mm. ignoring for uh, yes. the whole of the interview. But tell us about this picture. Well, they call it the homoment, the, the, the homosexual monument. It's three pink triangles making up one triangle. The pink triangle is the label attached to gay people in the concentration mm. camps. And this is a memorial to, to the gay 
victims and heroes of of war and occupation and uh, it it was a long journey to get there even for a country like holland stephen prime thank you very much such a pleasure matt thank you and in the last few moments the snp has agreed to allow one media camera just one into their series of leadership hustings it earlier said the journalists would be banned from a series of debates among the three candidates vying to take over from Nicola Sturgeon. 